So um, if the right atrium has blood coming into it, that means that these must be veins. So we have um, the first two are going to be the superior vena cava. That's first. And then the second one is going to be the inferior vena cava. So superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. And um, just recall that the superior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from the body to the heart from all the structures above the diaphragm. And the inferior vena cava, of course we know superior above, inferior below, inferior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from all of the structures below the diaphragm. And then finally, this last and third one, uh, sometimes teachers test on it, sometimes they don't, but it's good to know, is the coronary sinus. Now what does the coronary sinus do? The coronary sinus actually brings, again, since we're coming to the right atrium, and these are veins, uh, they're bringing deoxygenated blood to the heart. Now, if this is taking care of the, the structures above the diaphragm and this is taking care of the structures below the diaphragm, well, what's left? Well, don't forget that the heart is also a muscle. The muscle in the heart also needs oxygen and nutrients from the blood. So once it's used up those oxygen and nutrients, that blood needs to be circulated back, you know, uh, through the lungs so that it can be uh, oxygenated once again. And so the coronary sinus is bringing blood from the myocardium. So, so literally it's bringing blood from the heart muscle. So um, those are basically the three that come into the right atrium. So then we're going to travel this way down into the ventricle through the tricuspid valve. Um, the tricuspid valve is um, just remember that on, on, on the right side it's tricuspid, on the left side it's bicuspid. And um, the purpose of the valve is basically to prevent blood from flowing back into the atrium when the ventricles are contracting. So if blood has flown down into the, the ventricle and then the ventricle squeezes to be able to pump the blood you know, out this way, um, that increase in pressure, of course, might want to force some of the blood back, in, back into the right atrium. Well, we don't want that to happen. Um, that would, you know, be inefficient, and then some blood would never get oxygenated. So this valve is here to prevent that backflow. And actually, actually, um, I drew the little cuspids like that because um, if you if you look at the actual valve, it actually kind of looks like spider webs or like stretched toffee or something, like really like stringy. And those strings that are actually holding the valve down and to keep it from inverting are called uh, the chordae tendinae. And they actually connect papillary muscle to the valve to prevent the valve from inverting. And uh, those are made out of collagen. So, um, so that's why I kind of drew them like pointed like that and I, I specifically drew three and two so you'd be able to easily tell which one is the tricuspid and which one is the bicuspid. So of course then from the right atrium we flow down into the right ventricle and um, again we mentioned that this was deoxygenated blood coming into the heart via veins um, so now it needs to be oxygenated again so of course this blood is going to then travel to the lungs so um, this is going to be called the pulmonary trunk and that takes blood to the lungs <clears throat> and this valve here okay so both of these valves are called semilunar valves and then this one since it goes to the lungs it's called the pulmonary semilunar valve and this one is gonna this is the aorta so it's gonna be the aortic semilunar valve but I'll mention that again in a second so this valve here is the pulmonary semilunar valve tricuspid bicuspid pulmonary semilunar, aortic semilunar. So, um, so this basically is the uh, pulmonary circuit. The blood flows out of the right ventricle through the, pul through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk to the lungs. And then from the lungs, the blood becomes oxygenated and then it goes and it comes back and flows into the 
left atrium because remember the atriums are the receiving chambers of the heart so the atrium always the atria always receive blood and the ventricles always pump blood and for that reason too you'll notice that when you're looking at the heart the atriums are significantly smaller they're less muscular and um, and the ventricles are, are much thicker and much larger because they actually have to pump the blood and also something else that you'll notice is that the left side the muscle the myocardium is much thicker much 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 thicker compared to the right side and the reason for that is because the left side delivers blood to the body whereas the right side delivers blood to the lungs now if you think about it in your you know in your own body the lungs are very close to your heart so it doesn't have to pump very hard or have that much pressure or it doesn't need as much force basically to get the blood all the way from your heart to the lungs but think about it from the from the other ventricle it has to go to your whole body so you have to have enough pressure there to get the blood going so the left side is going to be much thicker the the walls of the, of the muscle there so when you're looking if you know when you're get, taking a test or whatever just if you forget which side is which or you know which one goes where i just remember that the left side you'll notice that the left side is thicker and so therefore that must be the side that goes that delivers blood to the body because you need more more pressure to to be able to you know get all the way down to your to your toes and stuff so all right so the blood um, comes in from the body into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk to the lungs and then comes back into the left atrium through the pulmonary veins again veins because they're bringing blood back to the heart there's four of them so there's two from each lung so the pulmonary veins times four so all so this you know all four of these are just pulmonary veins um, like I said two from each lung so and then from the left atrium we're gonna go down through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle and then the left ventricle is going to deliver but blood to the rest of the body so this is going to be the aorta again remember a for artery means it takes blood away from the heart so this is the aorta and this goes to the rest of the body and then of course following uh, the same syntax as this other valve here uh, this is also called the semilunar valve but it is the aortic semilunar valve so um, and then this takes blood to the body so this leaving here and returning in here is going to be the systemic circuit and then leaving from the right ventricle and returning to the left atrium is going to be the pulmonary circuit so um, one other thing to notice in here is um, the wall that separates the ventricles so this wall right here that is called the interventricular septum interventricular in between the ventricles and then septum and then this one up here that separates the atria is going to be called the interatrial septum so I'm just going to go ahead and and write in the names of the valves so this is um, aortic semi lunar valve right here this one is pulmonary semi lunar valve right there this is the bicuspid valve and this one is the tricuspid valve this is to the lungs this is to the body this is from body and this is from the lungs so uh, one more time 
So if we start up here, we have the right atrium. The three things that come into the right atrium are the superior vena cava from delivering blood from the structures above the diaphragm, the inferior vena cava, which is delivering blood from the structures below the diaphragm, and then the coronary sinus, which delivers blood from the myocardium that goes into the right atrium. The right atrium then leads us through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Then the blood travels through the pulmonary semilunar valve and then via the pulmonary trunk to the lungs. Come around this way. From the lungs, we come through the pulmonary veins. Again, veins uh, bringing blood back to the heart. There's four of them, two from each lung into the left atrium. And then we go through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. And then from the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve. And then via the aorta to the rest of your body. And then of course there will be another video later um, about the circulation and the names of all the different vessels that branch off from the aorta and the vena cava and whatnot. So basically for me, when I was learning the heart, um, it helped me a lot to draw it like this rather than trying to randomly understand from looking at an actual heart, a model or an, you know, an actual you know, preserved heart, um, trying to learn the, the vessels. It was much easier for me to learn it like this and then when I actually looked at the model, it was easy for me to find the structures because I already knew what was coming in and going out of each chamber. So yeah, that should do it for the heart. Thank you.